Chris, you want to raise a very important issue. Do you want to just talk us through it? Yeah, well, I was um, approached um, a year or two ago by the family of uh, Breck Bednar, who was brutally um, murdered as a, as a teenager um, by a, a sadistic killer called Lewis Danes, who's now serving a very long, I think, 20-year prison sentence. Um, that was about five years ago. Um, but more recently, the family of Breck, including his, I think, 17-year-old um, sister Chloe, have been receiving incredibly distressing messages on Snapchat purporting to be from the killer, Lewis Danes. We don't know if they come from him or not. Graphically recounting the circumstances of her brother's murder back in 2014. Unbelievably um, distressing, disgusting messages. Um, we asked um, Snapchat if they would help identify which account these, these messages were being sent from and which device they're being sent from. And um, they have not, in my view, been providing the assistance that they should. Um, they've referred to this mutual legal assistance treaty between the UK and the because US. Because they say they're an American company, don't they? And therefore That's they're right. not. But, th but this, this mutual, uh, mutual assistance treaty takes about a year to get information. But this is a live police investigation. We need to find out now who is sending these messages. I don't think they're correct either in trying to hide behind it. I think, that, as far as I can tell, under current laws, both in the US and the UK, when it comes to information about who is sending a message and the device the message is being sent from as opposed to the content of the message which we know about already there is nothing in US law preventing them from sharing that they are choosing not to and there's another case where Facebook refused to provide the UK police with the password to a Facebook account of a criminal suspect and I think these companies should be compelled to provide information so how would to the you police. bring that about how, how would you make that happen so there's um, currently there is a negotiation going on between the UK and US government um, over um, production orders that would enable um, this to happen more quickly but that is a negotiation that's underway I think we need to do, do do even more and say to these companies unless they cooperate fully with the UK police obviously with a court order with a UK court order um, unless they cooperate with UK police inquiries and um, they shouldn't be allowed to operate in the UK when there are serious criminal cases the police is trying to investigate and they need this sort of information which device sent the message where was it sent from whose account was it sent from that kind of information it should be provided to the police upon uh, production of a UK court order straight away, not after a year. Sean, do you want to come in at all? I mean, obviously, the importance of international cooperation in policing is really high. Uh, we've also seen from the, the, the uh, media companies, uh, the social media companies, a real reluctance to act on, on, yeah. on you know, racist abuse, sexist mm. abuse that goes on. People report things and report things and accounts carry on causing abuse mm. and a lot of these times these are fake accounts but mm. some are really malicious individuals. Um, it, is, it is really difficult especially when there's, there's international um, law that's involved mm. and international agreement. That's right and there, there, was, there have been some terrible cases um, like the Molly Russell case who committed suicide mm. after I think it was either Instagram or Pinterest actively sent messages to her encouraging um, self-harm. Now the government published a white paper um, just a week or two ago to clamp down or to try and clamp down on that kind of thing but I, I completely agree in, these companies are publishing and in some cases actively promoting pushing content harmful content often towards vulnerable young people and they must take responsibility for their actions well we did uh, ask snapchat uh, for a statement they got back to us they they said that you know they express real sympathy for the family in the case that you refer to uh, they say they are complying with the law and that they are you know watching with some interest how uh, uh, the government responds to this and what happens with, as you say, the white paper that you've spoken well, about. I think they could, have done, could and should have done more under the law, even as it stands today, in my okay. view. Okay, well, I think this is an issue that we will come back to, Chris, so thanks for bringing it in today.